I'm going to talk in this lecture about uh, global change challenges and the role time plays in these challenges. And that um, time, from my point of view, um, and certain temporal elements play a crucial role um, in such issues like climate change, uh, nuclear waste, urbanization, when we wanted to deal with it um, in a democratic way. So. I want to invite you to um, a thought experiment at the beginning. Um, as you know, offices of regional planning exist worldwide, and their main mission can be explained in a simple manner, to organize space. And this might include such different tasks like uh, forecasting infrastructural requirements, land development counseling, designating areas for specific purposes, or subsequent zoning enforcement. Now think uh, of a more time-centered perspective that is so far very uncommon and without a well-established diction of its object of study. But imagine there's also an office of time uh, concerned with temporal planning. What would be at its portfolio? It has to organize time. So imagine this office of time has three departments. The first one is on observation, the second one on strategic orientation, and the third one on implementation. Um, department one, observation observes the manifold functions of temporal elements in such areas as democracy, a demography, for example, measuring the impact of temporal violence among generations, land use, for example, does desynchronization of social and national rhythms uh, affect wealth, urbanization, do monocentric and polycentric agglomerations have similar mobility rhythms, um, technology, for example, under which circumstances does artificial intelligence compress, stretch, or standardize subjective with this world time, or energy, what tempos and sequences enable or disable transformation towards renewables. The head of department one collates these findings in a yearly time outlook that presents the status quo in each area and analyzes the dynamic interplay of the detected temporal functions. Department two, strategic orientation, develops strategic orientation on desirable forms of temporal development. The head of the government uh, of the department is an advocate of chronopolitanism. She advises her staff to develop codes of conduct and guidelines which ensure that humans have the same opportunities to achieve a given quality of life, irrespective of the temporal conditions into which they were, are, or will be born or live in. The department's current priority is to define at which point temporal self-rule by individuals and society has to end, since the natural rhythms of planetary systems are deeply influenced and disrupted. Lastly, Department 3, um, Implementation, figures out how the strategic orientations can be implemented under the current temporal conditions. Therefore, Department 3 develops policy proposals, drafts bills, or initiates citizen and stakeholder dialogues. Just recently, Department 3 initiated two major campaigns, one with educational institutions to increase temporal literacy by establishing time as an object of study from kindergarten to lifelong learning, and the other campaign with judges um, on the constitutional changes necessary to enable lawmaking addressing the intervening of timescales, especially regarding short-term interests and long-term needs within the context of climate change and nuclear waste. So this thought experiment illustrates that time is something um, highly tangible and influences our lives and the Earth system in multiple ways. Even though the office of time seems far from realization, time's influence are real and its function could be designed in a cyber way by ending temporal immaturity. And this also will help to solve such um, challenges as climate change. And um, if you look at the research on time and the influence of all these temporal uh, features, you see um, that there's not much out there. Um, research often appears in paradigm shifts or in turns. And if you see, for example, there's a linguistic turn, a cultural turn, a spatial turn, that's the other main dimension of the universe, and many more, and you find right at the right side the temporal turn. So time is not very much often mentioned, even though I think it's very important for uh, global challenges. And in my discipline, political science, uh, it's especially uh, mentioned that time is still the 
neglected dimension that reflections on the politics and time have remained unsystematic, implicit, and dispersed, and our theoretical insights, conceptual truths, and empirical knowledge have remained severely limited, and that there are no studies that systematically explore the interconnectedness of different temporal features of political systems. Now, if you look at certain examples, and this is rather um, really looking at some issues uh, that I think should be brought together in some way, you can start with the person itself, with the circadian rhythm. And uh, just uh, last week, or the, last, uh, the week before, the Nobel Prize in uh, Medicine uh, was given to um, uh, researchers for their discoveries of molecular mechanisms controlling the circadian rhythm. So why does uh, people sleep usually once a day and not every two and a half day? How does light affect our sleeping and awakening um, rhythms? And you find this uh, time perspective also in psychology where you, uh, where it's differentiated um, between past positive, past negative, present fatalistic, present hedonistic, and future-oriented people. And if you are, and most people are not aware of what kind of um, uh, tendency they self have, uh, if you are past uh, negative and you know, uh, you, you think, well, I had these experiences with uh, this uh, process and um, uh, it didn't end well, and well, why should any future process end well? And there are other people that are much more future-oriented by themselves. So they are looking at the future, they wanted to build uh, different futures, they are goal-oriented um, for a better tomorrow. And so I think most people aren't really aware of, of these um, temporal rhythms and uh, we, we are not really temporally mature, so to say. Another example, if you look at uh, climate change, you see that there are very often stop signs and projections. And um, for example, we need uh, zero emissions until uh, 2050 and that until there, there's some really uh, well outspelled mechanism how we can get there if we do the right things, more uh, technical practical uh, argument um, that climate change needs to introduce the future to the present, but that there's also this uh, cyclic versus linear uh, attitude regarding um, uh, temporality. So you have the carbon cycle, of course, and you have to think and integrate these different uh, temporal thinkings in, in, in one perspective to solve the climate challenge. You have um, another example, if you look at cities, um, we published with the German Advisory Council on Global Change a report on humanity on the move, unlocking the transformative power of cities. Since uh, urbanization is uh, crucial to solve uh, many global change issues, since two thirds of the global population will live by 2050 in cities, that uh, there will be new urban middle class uh, neighborhoods that will be very resource intense. And if you look at this uh, figure, you see that uh, this move so far uh, will probably lead to much more emissions. You have on the x-axis the Human Development Index and you have on the y-axis the uh, National Eco Ecological Footprint. And you see that uh, the urbanization level, if it increases, also increases uh, the ecological footprint. So we have to decouple this in, in whatever way. And the temporal conditions under which uh, cities develop are rupture, evolution, and conservation. You see here uh, Kigali, New Delhi, Riyadh, uh, Copenhagen, and Jakarta. And you have cities where there's a lot of rupture, um, especially in slums. If there's a natural catastrophe, uh, the whole slum will just be wiped out. You have uh, cities that develop more in an evolutionary way by um, well, building a new neighborhood there, probably have a new building here, but doing this step by step. And you have cities that are like Venice, uh, more in a conservation manner, uh, that don't develop any further, that are more like a museum. And you have this effect of speed and scale, so, so uh, very much acceleration. You uh, look at, for example, uh, the use uh, of concrete in the US and China, and you see that 
in the US in the whole uh, 20th century, 4.5 uh, billion tons of concrete were used, while in China between 2011 and 2013, 6.6 .6 billion uh, tons of concrete were used. And this uh, acceleration uh, takes place worldwide. Um, you have uh, social economic trends, for example, regarding the world population, uh, GDP, um, water use, and so on and so forth. And you have these same trends that are coupled in the Earth system uh, regarding carbon dioxide, um, methane, um, ocean uh, acidification, um, and so on and so forth. So th there's this uh, acceleration going on. You have to question, uh, as another example with nuclear waste, how should we represent, and uh, if we apply, for example, such an all affected principle, which means that all people who are affected by an issue should be uh, participating, how should you uh, represent uh, generations in the next uh, million years that are affected by nuclear waste? Um, and what are the signs we should put on this nuclear waste so that people in 500,000 years still know, well, we shouldn't look into that? Or do they think, well, what sign is it? We, we, should, we should look at it and open it. Um, and uh, other dis uh, example I discovered just recently is the Pleistocene Park. It's um, based in Siberia and they wanted to uh, um, rebuild the Siberian um, steppe ecosystem like it was in the previous Earth uh, time frame of the Pleistocene. And they do this so quite well since the 1970s and now there are new uh, 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 well, experiments going on, especially in Japan, where they think about um, putting um, the mammoth again in that park. And um, the question is then, well, who should decide about these issues? If we change our timescales, if we overlap them, if we do some conservation of um, a time that was long ago and try to bring it back. Who, who has the legitimization to, to, to argue about such issues? And so we not only need, I would argue, um, a, a office of time, we even need uh, probably uh, a United Times. And I don't know if you can read that, but I can read it for you. So. We have, regarding the uh, space, the United Nations, where all the different countries of the world are represented, but how would it look like if we represent all the different times? And in that uh, General Assembly of the United Times, the Earth says, I find it increasingly uh, difficult to, to provide a good life for everyone. Then the Chronopolitan says, uh, the solution is the temporal imperative. Act according to a notion of time that enables a good life, irrespective of the temporal conditions into which one was, is, or will be born. The synchronization answers, for this we must synchronize natural and social time frames. When the past is but a deliberate uh, break in time scales, was, however, also caused some changes. And then the tempo says, and we had this with the acceleration now slowly, uh, the cycle says, uh, you perhaps think everything always moves linearly. The future says to claim there is no future can endanger you in the long term. And then the present says, why should I do something for future generations? What did they do for me? Um, the flexibility says we need a transition at once, otherwise we'll risk our future flexibility. And the Anthropocene uh, finally says, what a mess. Uh, we know too little about a few functions of time. To create a new time design, we need a temporally mature society. Let's get started. And so I think um, this, uh, this normative orientation of uh, the chronopolitanism is maybe something worth uh, thinking about because we should enable um, a good life for everyone, not only uh, irrespective where on earth he or she is born, but also under which condor, uh, temporal conditions one uh, is, will be born or was born. And so I think behind a lot of these global challenges, there is this time perspective. And we don't really know a lot about um, the functions time has, how all these different temporal dimensions relate to each other. And I think we should much more thinking about time in the coming years to solve the challenges ahead. Thank you.